Today's project is going to be a set of entomology mini canvases. Hello everyone, it's Maddie Azar with Spectrum Art Creations and today we are going to be working on these super cute little canvases. Now these I had gotten for Madison a long long time ago when she was little uh, and we kind of just been holding on to them. They have like really cute little images for children to, uh, I guess, color in little purses and castles and tiaras and stuff like that. And so I figured, well, we were going to be working on our challenge for our Facebook group. So in our Facebook group, Spectrum Art Creations Friends, we had a napkin challenge in which we challenged each other we got partners and we challenged each other to uh, create something decoupaging a napkin and the challenger got to choose what surface we were going to be decoupaging on so they chose the substrate uh, and my partner selected that I would need to use a canvas so rather than using one canvas I decided to use three little canvases and make a set Now I chose to use this napkin because it features birch trees and they are a pretty neutral uh, background but they do have a really nice pop of color on the bottom. It's almost like a mossy uh, forest green color on the bottom and so I thought that would be just the right amount of color that I would need for the project that I had in my mind. Now, it was nice enough that you could actually get two tiles, well technically you could get four tiles out of this napkin, but I needed um, the moss at the bottom so I ended up using two different napkins so that I could get three bottom panels out of it. Now this challenge is going to be super fun. A, because we have so many beautiful napkins in our store. If you have not checked out our napkins, please make sure that you do so because we have so many and actually there are tons more that are not listed. So if you have any questions, I will be linking the products in the description box. But if you are ever needing something and you do not see it, do ask us because odds are pretty good that we have it. Uh, we just don't get around to listing every single napkin. We have so many of them. Actually, I kind of debated and I went back and forth on, you know, which napkins to use for this project. I had a whole lot of inspirations and ideas floating in my head as I was walking through the uh, napkin section. And I thought, hmm, and, and you know what, maybe I'll share those ideas with you. And you guys can uh, leave a comment down below and let us know if you're interested in me doing a set with any of those. So I thought of birdhouses because we have some beautiful birdhouse napkins. And so I thought, oh, it would be nice to do a set of, you know, like three uh, different birdhouses. Then I thought, what about birds? I could do some with birds. Then I thought uh, that oriental, um, oriental sets would be nice too. So I thought, I know we have oriental napkins and I thought maybe I can do a trio of um, oriental canvases. What other ideas? I thought, oh, nautical. We have beautiful uh, whales and seahorses and I thought, oh, and turtles. And I thought maybe I can do like a nautical one because that would be nice to hang you know, outside on the porch or by the pool or, uh, you know, on the, on a beach house or, you know, just as beautiful decorations. If you have like a theme room with, uh, some nautical stuff. And what else did I think of? Um, there was one more, I can't think of it now, but I, I thought of quite a few ideas. How's that? 
Now here I'm going to be adding clear gesso and, and I wanted to mention, of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to be linking everything down below and if you have questions on anything, do ask. But the clear gesso is going to help me to protect the napkin without creating a resist necessarily. I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to be spraying it with something or, you know, adding maybe some um, distressed crayons or gelatos. So because of that reason, I didn't want it to resist, but I also wanted to protect the napkin from tearing should I decide to do, you know, some mixed media or some other things to it. So the clear gesso is what I decided to use next. I could have sealed it with the Spectrum Art Creations glue. That's a decoupage and sealing glue. So it's great for decoupaging, but it's also great for sealing. And again, because it creates that um, sealing where it's going to protect the surface, I didn't want it to interfere and act as a resist for anything else, any other products that I might have put on here. So I decided to go with the clear gesso. So I finally remembered the other ideas I had were um, holiday ones. So I thought maybe a Christmas or a fall, uh, maybe a Halloween. I don't have a whole lot of Halloween. I think we have maybe 10, 10 different Halloween napkins perhaps, but I thought of fall and I thought of Christmas. And so let me know what you think of those. Now, going back to the challenge as well, this month we're doing the napkin challenge right we don't get we don't have to swap anything we don't mail anything we simply challenge each other as to what to create on we get to choose whatever napkins we want uh whatever project we want so it, it's very um conducive to expressing yourself and to using what you have because like for me, I had these little canvases. Uh, some other friends in the group got challenged to do, uh, you know, something on wood or uh, a book cover, a, a tissue box. Somebody had to do a um, an LED candle. So, you know, just fun, fun stuff. Then next month, we're going to be doing a Rolodex challenge. If you're not familiar with that, that's where you actually make Rolodex um, cards like we used to use in the I guess old days I should say <laughs> my days um, where we would actually write a person's address phone number contact information and maybe some notes um, those are Rolodex but now of course we use them for art uh, I think the month after that we're gonna be doing ATCs or artist trading cards so every month we're just doing different challenges encouraging each other to create uh, to break out our stash because I tell you I went on a hunt last night <laughs> trying to do this video I I knew what I had in my mind but it doesn't mean that I have it exactly right so I kind of had to go through and figure out what would work for different layers and, and you'll see that as we progress along in the video um, and yes so it's a great way to have to use your stash and to have to think outside the box and to more importantly grow because let's face it sometimes some of the stuff you know it's not something that you're used to creating with for example the last one that I got challenged on was I had to decoupage a napkin on something plastic and I don't know if you guys have seen that video I'll try to put a link in the description box it's the one that it was a binder believe it or not I looked everywhere in my house and I could not find anything plastic I mean other than like you know a tub of butter or something I mean just you know silly things but I didn't have anything like plastic um, maybe some cups um, but that was it my glasses <laughs> I couldn't really find a, a vitamin jar I really kept looking and it was just stuff that I was like no a kitchen timer I cannot decoupage the kitchen timer <laughs> so not just not practical 
And I looked and I looked and then I thought of a binder. Um, it has, has the plastic cover. I would have never thought of decoupaging a binder. So it was great, again, to have to walk around the house and go, hmm, okay. Um, and I was laughing because I was telling um, Bernie, my husband, I was telling him, oh my gosh, hon, I realized that 90% of everything in this house is either paper, fabric, or wood. God forbid there was a fire because there'd be nothing left. We are just loaded with lots of paper, obviously, because that's my passion. I love paper. And then, of course, Madison loves her fabric. As you guys have seen the craft room tour, she's got baskets full of um, fabric. And, and so, yeah, <laughs> it's like, not to mention, of course, the clothing in your closets and all that, right? But your linen closet, your towels. So, yeah, I, but that's good. I mean, I was kind of happy to see that finding plastic in my house was a struggle. That's good. I'm not upset about that. So yes, if you're looking to, to jo join some fun challenges and just grow and have to put yourself out there, and, and there's no judgment, by the way. So let me remove the stressor out of challenges because I know sometimes we compete or we feel like we have to compete even with ourselves. We're very hard on ourselves, right? We, we tend to be our worst critics. It is about having fun, using your stuff, being creative, creating art just for the sake of art, right? So again, if you love challenges where you don't have to mail anything, you don't have to exchange anything, because I know that's also a limiting factor for a lot of folks is the fact that, well, mailing is not, you know, it's not cheap. And we also have a lot of international friends and for them, it's very difficult to, to mail uh, or, or for us to mail to them the timelines of course they have to wait to get the stuff and yeah it just becomes a really big nightmare for international friends so this is a great way to not have to mail anything so I try to make it as simple as possible to allow as many people to be able to create with whatever they have so yes if you're looking for great challenges I hope you will join us in the next one and of course join the Facebook group After I was done distressing, I realized that we needed to add one more layer. Again, sometimes it's all about building those layers and adding dimension. So I started looking around and thinking, hmm, what do I have? What do I have? Something with cool text. Oh, and what could be better than an Edith Holden book? So I have several different versions of the Edith Holden book. We also have them in the store, by the way, if you're interested. Again, I'll put the link down below. But this version is really small. It's smaller than the regular hardbound book, the, the hardcovers. And therefore, it has smaller text. And I thought, oh, that's kind of perfect because, again, my canvases are kind of small. I think they're like a five by five. So that kind of gives you an idea. They're these little tiles, right? So I thought perfect, perfect little text. And I'm looking for pages that uh, 
preferably only have text because oh, it's such a shame to have to just waste those images, right? Her beautiful drawings and sketches. But I thought this would be just a great way to give us another layer, a different type of texture because this paper is not only very old, but it has a lot of linen in it. So it has a lot of cotton content, at least this book that I have. Um, again, there's different versions and they have been reprinted. Uh, on different years but this one had that perfect yellowing color and lots of great uh, fiber pulp in it and I thought perfect and of course I'm doing a fussy tear so that I have those jagged edges as well so again take a look around you might have a different text you might just have you know a reader or you know a reader's digest or maybe a kids encyclopedia whatever it is that you have book pages always make a great addition to your projects When it comes to dimension, foam tape is going to be your best friend. It is the easiest way to add some dimension, some depth to your project. So, and especially if you use it in between the different layers or double it up, you can bring a lot of depth to your projects by adding some foam tape. And that of course helps the eye to focus on different areas and create shadows as well. So that brings other points of interest. I'm using black uh, foam tape. There are different color dimensional tape. For example, there's white, so the rolls, and also the squares and the circles. And there's also um, different widths. So we have some really skinny ones. We have this one, which is, you know, the average one that we typically use a lot. And then of course we have some really thicker ones all the way up to sometimes full sheets. So there's a lot of ways uh, to be used uh, in your projects. Now, this gorgeousness is the 49 and Market oh, Laser Cuts. If you are not familiar, this is one of our best sellers absolutely love their laser cuts because they just as you can see pop right out they come laser pre-cut and look at how many butterflies we have to choose from of course most of you know if you followed us for a while that i love 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 fussy cutting it's like one of my passions it's one of the things that i do just to de-stress when i am just wanting to chill out and watch a movie or waiting for Madison at doctor's appointments. That's what I do. I fussy cut. However, I know it's not for everyone. I know some of you absolutely despise is the word. Like you're just like, no, 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 no fussy cutting for me. Well, this is definitely one of the companies and the elements that you would like to consider if that is you. On the other hand, I will share with you that I have been having a little bit more uh, problems with my hands, with my fingers. It's just getting harder and harder. I still love it, but it is definitely becoming more difficult for me to fussy cut on certain days or for a very long period of time. And again, this is where great laser cut or already cut elements and ephemera is going to be key for your projects. So just like these tiles that I'm using here, they were already done, they're pre-cut. All I had to do was de-stress them and then adhere them down. So great way again to add more interest, more layers, more depth, uh, you know, add fussy cut uh, detailed images. All of these things are going to help focus your eye to different parts of your artwork, which of course is what we want to do. We do not want to overwhelm the eye and we also don't want to have it flat because that's where, you know, a piece might have great elements, but it just doesn't seem to resonate with us. And a lot of it has to do, of course, with visual because art is all about the visual. Uh, very little things in art, uh, you know, have tac tactile uh, elements, which they can, of course, if you're working with a journal, 
and even auditory. You could have like onion skin paper and things that crinkle. Uh, maybe you have some charms that dangle from it. Sure, but if it's something stationary on a wall, such as these canvases or a painting, you want to, or maybe it's just a, uh, an ornamental piece, right? Like a lamp or something. You want to make sure that your positioning is appealing to the eye as well as the different elements that you're using uh, in there as well. So I, I hope that is helping out when it comes to being able to place your items. You'll notice that some of them are off-centered. Uh, and again, I go into a lot more detail when I do uh, workshops or when I do classes than when I do these um, little short um, videos that I kind of fast forward just to bring you inspiration. But if you ever have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. We love your comments. I love your comments. Madison looks for comments every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like, mm-hmm. So we love to hear feedback from you guys. Tell us what you like, what you think. Do you have questions? Is there something you're looking for? Did it inspire you in any way? Will you be working on one of these? I hope so. I hope you'll pick up some little canvases and you might even already have some or you might find some that you could repurpose, right? You could also kind of make your own. They might not have the canvas unless you want to stretch some canvas over a wood frame but you might have something else uh, that you could use as a substrate and kind of use the same idea. You can use this to make tags and pockets and journal covers and greeting cards. I mean, the idea and the concepts will translate to just about any medium uh, and form of art that you enjoy. Now in this step, I could have just used black acrylic, but you know what? An ink pad is so much faster. And these are the Graphic 45 Hybrid inks, which are amazing. And once they are dry, I know that they're going to be permanent on there. I also didn't want a full solid black. I could have because this black is super lush, but I wanted more of a charcoal distress look. Like these um, have been hanging in a study somewhere from a uh, someone who studied entomology and had all these great slides and books all around the cupboards and so i hope that that look was achieved i believe that it was i hope you guys have enjoyed the project i hope you liked it i hope you're going to give it a whirl and make some for yourself like i said you can convert this into any other type of art medium that you prefer Thank you so much for joining us today in the art studio. Won't you do us a favor and please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment. That helps us bring you more content and inspiration as well as share in your crafty group. Share with your friends. It helps the channel to grow. Also, be sure to check out our online stores. We have two stores available and make sure you join us for our weekly live sales. So much fun if you've never come to one of our live sales make sure that you please do so because we do all kinds of fun giveaways and games show you products uh, share uh, demos it's just a whole lot of fun and of course make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can enjoy even more tutorials and giveaways and product alerts and all kinds of fun stuff thank you so much for joining us today in the art studio we so enjoyed your company. We hope that you guys had a wonderful time crafting along with us, and we will see you all soon. Bye!